well, here we are on our second um, Advent week. Everybody else is doing Advent uh, in December, but we're starting Advent in November. Um, and we're going to have these eight wonderful weeks. We've done one of them already. It's our second week. It's been wonderful to hear the lovely things that people have said about what they love about Christmas through the little doors on the Advent calendar. And in these messages, we're, we're looking at uh, Christmas through the eyes of the people who were part of it in the Bible. Um, and these people of Christmas are linked to the Christmas story in the Bible. And we heard last week about how for hundreds and hundreds of years... Um, the Jewish people, among the Jewish people, the prophets had spoken, hadn't they, that someone was coming, somebody was coming who was going to be a saviour for the whole world. And this coming one became known to the Jews as the Messiah. Um, he was the anointed one, the Christ, and the prophets prophesied about him. Men like Balaam, do you remember, who had been asked to curse the people of Israel, but instead he blessed them. He said, how can I curse those who God has blessed? And as he blessed them, the Holy Spirit fell on him. And he has a vision, doesn't he, of Jesus. And God allowed him to look into the future, far into the future. And he saw a sight of Jesus. And do you remember, he cried out and he said, I can see him but not now. I'm beholding him, but he's not near. He's far away. A star is going to rise out of Jacob and a scepter out of Israel. And so these prophets kept saying, this person is coming, wait for him, look for him. Finally, the day dawns in Israel when the prophecies start to be fulfilled. This is 1500 years after Balaam lived and it's 450 years after Nehemiah and all those people built the walls. And fascinatingly, the story begins with a couple, but not Mary and Joseph. No, the couple that it begins with are called Elizabeth and Zacharias. And this couple were an elderly couple. They feared God. They were righteous. He was a priest. They lived about 2,000 years ago. He was a priest in the temple. And the Bible tells us that they were old. Um, and they had prayed for children, but they didn't have any children. One day when uh, Zacharias went to the temple... Uh, he was there to go in and to burn incense on this altar that they had before. Uh, in, in, inside the temple, there was this altar and in it, they, they would burn this incense and it would rise up to God. And it was his turn to do that. And outside in the main court, all the people would gather and they would be praying. And on this day, he went in and it must have just been like an ordinary day. And then suddenly in front of him, he sees an angel. And this angel stands there and says to him, don't be afraid, Zacharias, he said. Don't be afraid, he said. Your prayer has been heard and God is going to answer your prayer. What was his prayer? His prayer must have been, Lord, would you give us a child? And the, the angel said to him, this, you will have a son and you're going to call his name John. And he's going to bring great joy to the people. And he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth like no other child has ever been. And he has come especially for one mission, to prepare the way for the Messiah. And then Zechariah says to the angel, how can this happen? And the angel says, I am Gabriel. I have come from the presence of the Lord and you did not believe my words. So you won't be able to speak until these things come to pass. And, and note this, Zacharias, they will come to pass. And so he's struck dumb. He can't speak. He can't say a word. And he comes out to the people and this crowd gather around him and they know something strange is going on. And the Bible says that they presumed he'd had some kind of vision. And he returns to his home and to Elizabeth, and, and it must have been about a year, nine months, a year later, incredibly, this old couple have a child. And when the people all gather around, they say to, to Elizabeth, because Zacharias can't speak, they say to her, what are you going to call this boy? And she says, his name is John. And they say, John? There's nobody called John in your family. You need to name him after his father. He should be called Zacharias Jr., and then they go to Zacharias and they said, are you sure about this? She's saying this boy is going to be called John. And he gets a slate out and he writes down on it. His name is John. And as he writes it, his mouth is opened and God gives him back his speech. And the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit and finds he can speak again. And he begins to, to worship God. He begins to praise God. And then he begins to prophesy. 
And he prophesies about his own son, saying, You, my little child, will be a prophet of the Most High. His son was going to go on to become John the Baptist, who made the way for Jesus. And then Zacharias says, You will make a way for the Lord, who is coming. And then, just like Balaam, 1,500 years before Zacharias, Zacharias himself catches a glimpse of Jesus and he begins to say extraordinary things about this baby who's soon to be born in Bethlehem, John's cousin. It's as if God opens his eyes and he sees that this child is coming and that this child is a saviour. And he declares this coming one will be like the sunrise dawning in men's hearts. He said, for those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, a great light is dawning. God, he said, has provided for Israel a mighty saviour. Just like Balaam, Zacharias' eyes had been opened and he caught a sight of Jesus who was soon to be born on the earth. So let's finish with a question. Have our eyes been opened? How much of Jesus have we really seen? just glimpses and fragments. I want my eyes to be open, the eyes inside my heart, to see Jesus like I've not seen him before. And you might think, well, I know about Jesus. I've seen Jesus. But it's when we start to say in our hearts, actually, I don't know very much about Jesus. I've seen tiny glimpses, the wonder um, and the magnificence and the glory of this lamb that they're worshipping in heaven. I still have only a little bit Um, of sight of I've only seen a little bit of him and it's when we say that and say God I need to see more I want to see more that the Holy Spirit visits our hearts and then he begins to open our eyes and show us more about this magnificent and holy one who is Jesus Lord we we worship you today we say A bit like the Queen of Sheba said that the half hasn't been told, that we hardly know very much at all of this wonderful, magnificent one who is Jesus. Forgive us where we think of him just as the baby in Bethlehem, when he is this great king of heaven who will reign upon the earth. Would you, in your mercy and your kindness, open our eyes, open my eyes. I'm really praying this from my heart, that I would see Jesus more of Jesus over these next few weeks, Lord. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.